Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. She's out and about today, but we're going to talk about video game journalism. We're going to talk about how it seems like nature is healing. It seems like a lot of these websites are pivoting back to more neutral content. And really, again, all it took for that to happen was the money to run out and a, a massive shift in the way that media is consumed and created. We're going to talk about all the um, all the uh, grousing about how video game journalists in particular are affected by this change. And I don't think it's the end of video game journalism. I, I think it's a seismic shift. I think that a lot of the changes that are happening are happening with the express intention of getting rid of activists in this space. Uh, they've commandeered the journalism space, the digital media space for the better part of a decade, and it's over. Uh, it is over. For those who remain, they're going to have to get used to writing in a more neutral tone. Uh, they're going to have to get used to the idea of having AI go over their work to make sure they're writing in a neutral tone unless they're paid to do op-ed pieces. And frankly, a lot of these outlets are on the rocks right now, they can't afford to be driving away viewers with their hot takes. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Uh, check out clownfishtv.com. We try to be objective. We try to be objective. These are actually our videos. Uh, these, these takes are a little bit more spicy than the uh, journalistic pieces we produce over there. But yeah, this year has been catastrophic for tech and media. They were the hardest hit by this year's layoffs. And uh, it's been really bad. And the thing is, is that you look at the makeup of the, uh, the people that work in these industries. And I don't know if all these people had to be laid off. I think in some cases, these companies were laying them off deliberately to get rid of them. I'm starting to wonder if the, uh, the tech bubble bursting and the digital media bubble bursting wasn't just a way to get rid of activists out of this space so these companies could you know, try to pivot to profit. Look at what happened with Disney. When the chips were down, the first thing they did was toss their DEI officer overboard and then all the other studios, Hollywood studios, followed. Other companies followed. They're basically like, you know what? Uh, yeah, we have to go back to being profitable. Uh, times are going to get tough. We're in a recession and we got to make money and you don't make money by demonizing and chasing off at least half of your audience. I'm just saying. But gaming journalism is disproportionately affected. And again, I think that it's because gaming journalism has been disproportionately infected. And we saw this. We know this. We've, we've seen it uh, firsthand. We've been making fun of some of these articles for years. And I think it's funny, you know, just a couple months ago, these, these guys were trying very hard to make a case for why their jobs needed to exist. You know, remember this nugget here from PC Mag, game journalism layoffs, everyone suffers with that expert criticism. Uh, this is a game over from Neiman Lab. Is there even a future for video game journos? <clears throat> Gamesindustry.biz, why do game media layoffs keep happening? Redundancies are not uncommon, but the pace at which it's happening in games media is swelling. It's happening because they want you gone. The people who own these websites want you gone. They've wanted you gone for a while, but they knew you'd just take to Twitter and complain about it. And that doesn't work anymore either because Twitter, as it was, no longer exists. We've got this one. Uh, this is uh, prospect.org from about two months ago. The dire state of video game journalism. Informa, yelling is not journalism. Yelling is not journalism. Uh, game rage is not journalism, right? So yeah, I think what's going on, and I'm just going to kind of go off on a tangent here, is that uh, we have a couple of things. Uh, one, there was a lot of venture capital being spread around to keep these sites propped up. And we've talked about this at length. It's, it's no longer there. These sites have to sink or swim on their own. Two, the ad rates are down because a lot of tech companies are in the same position. They're not spending as much as they used to. And I think people have caught on to the fact that a lot of the traffic on these websites like Buzzfeed, et cetera, was fake. It was fake. Them going public was probably one of the worst things they could do. Then we saw Vice, which was another site. It, it cratered. So these websites aren't hot anymore. 
they're not a hot property anymore. And everybody was chasing digital media and video games and esports. And all of these things are kind of uh, cratering right now. Video games have never been more popular. I mean, video games are doing fine. The thing is, is gamers don't need video game journalists telling them what to buy. In fact, I think Hogwarts Legacy was a massive shift in, in the landscape because Hogwarts Legacy, and we had uh, Troy Levitt on the DRES podcast, he said that Warner Brothers basically intentionally didn't end run around video game journalists. And they sold a ridiculous number of games because actual gamers don't listen to these fake video game journalists. They haven't for quite some time. They've driven the core audience off. If people are going to these websites, they're going to the websites because they're looking for you know uh, game uh, strategy guides and unbiased reviews. And it's hard to find those things anymore. How do you beat a boss? You know, what's a cheat code for this game? That's what they're looking for. They're not going there to, to, to read an article about how the PS5 uh, is, is a guilty pleasure because the world is falling apart or, or how the latest Xbox has too many holes. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not why they're going there. So I think they realize that real gamers aren't writing these articles and now real journalists aren't writing the articles either. A lot of them are being generated by AI. The, the funny thing is, is that AI is also acting as an editor. AI is also fact-checking some of these journalists. I think a lot of them are pissed off. And this is, I, I think, what happened with uh, Comic Book Resources. Uh, we did a video the other day talking about how they were angry that the company was using AI to help write articles. Now, I don't know if those articles were completely generated by AI, but these people were angry that AI was kind of there looking over their shoulder, maybe helping assist them with fact-checking because the AI, or at least a lot of them, tend to be unbiased. I mean, it, de it depends. It depends. There's a whole theory about that. But for the most part, when it comes to just like video game journalism, the AI seems to be mostly unbiased, at least when it comes to, to facts, right? And AI is being used more and more just as a tool in journalism because it's very easy to punch something in and have the AI pull up, you know, dates or facts or whatever, right? Without personal opinion. And these people don't like it. And I don't think they're being replaced necessarily by AI, but I think AI is also looking over their shoulder. I think that, you know, we talked the other day about how uh, in comic book sites, and CBR being one of them, that they're not attacking YouTubers like they used to. They're sticking to the facts. And I think part of the reason they're sticking to the facts is uh, whoever is signing off on these articles is probably running it through the AI and the AI is like, well, this actually isn't fact factually correct or just stick to the facts. Or they've got people there telling them to stick to the facts. And that is a threat because these people, they don't want to be journalists. They want to be bloggers. And you're allowed to do that. You can go start your own website tomorrow and you can build it from scratch and, and you can you can give whatever hot take you want to give on it. But uh, I mean, the, the truth of the matter is people are just looking for information. Um, they're not looking for uh, confirmation bias like they used to, I don't think, or if they are, they're going to explicitly political sites. And frankly, most of these journalists are on the wrong side of the political spectrum from gamers because gamers tend to be a lot more based than these journalists are. And a lot of these journalists never love games or comics or whatever it is they're writing about movies to begin with. They just thought it was a ticket to Hollywood or, you know, it'd give them a leg up to get into like the New York Times or whatever. But even the New York Times is not what it used to be. There is no future in journalism, like regular journalism for a lot of people. There are going to be significantly fewer jobs. But uh, especially in the pop culture space, because it's never been that profitable to begin with. So these sites are going one of two ways. They're either going all in on outrage, like if you go to Inside the Magic, which is just like got some ridiculous headlines, right? Or they're trying to stick to the facts. I'm seeing a lot of the articles coming up lately that are just like, here are the facts. Here's how you beat this boss in this game. Here's how you do this, how you do that. So we don't need these activist journalists anymore. And I think this, this purge happened. I think the reason that there were so many layoffs, to bring it back to point, the reason there were so many layoffs at the beginning of the year is they were basically dumping all the people they wanted to dump. And then they were, they were going to make things so uncomfortable for the people that were left, that they would just leave on their own. They might scream about it, but they're just going to up and leave on their own. They're basically going to push the remaining people out 
by saying, hey, we're going to do AI. We're going to, you know, look at blockchain. We're going to do NFTs. Is that a problem for you? We're not going to demonize people because they're conservative and they like video games. Is that, is that a problem for you? Oh, it is? Oh, well, you might want to go someplace else and work. The video game industry has learned over the last year or two, especially, and thank you, the gamer. I think the gamer actually, uh, you know, is, is a, has, has played a huge part in this. Uh, because of their outrage over Hogwarts Legacy and boycotting Hogwarts Legacy, because of outlets like you and Kotaku getting blacklisted by Nintendo, by the way, they're sidestepping you completely. When the video game companies don't even trust video game journalists, you have a problem. When Nintendo blacklists Kotaku, you have a problem. When Warner Brothers sidesteps Hogwarts Legacy coverage, uh, doesn't even bother going to these, these video game sites, you have a problem. And so your owner, the company owner is going to look at this and be like, there is no reason for this site to exist. It's diminishing returns. You guys complain about everything. You're driving readers away and we can't even get access now because you've, you've chased off the biggest video game developer. They don't even want to talk to us now. So why are you here? Why are we paying for this website? Yeah, let's stop paying for it. And I think we're going to see the collapse of many of these websites. I mean, again, going back to um, what happened with uh, Giant Bomb and GameSpot? These sites were huge, and CBS paid like 500, 600 million dollars for them just a couple of years ago, and then they sold a lot of them off for like 50 million bucks. You know, a fraction of what they paid for it. The sites are worthless. Nature is healing. We're going to see fewer of these gaming sites, but I think the ones that are left are going to be honest. They're going to be run by actual gamers. And really, people are going to pivot to video and podcasts and, and Twitch streams for legit takes on the video game industry, on the comic book industry. Uh, it's basically over for these kinds of journalists. Um, and they're not going to adapt. They're, they're going to scream. They're not going to go into the night quietly. They're going to shriek, shriek, shriek. They'll be shrieking five years from now on whatever social media platform they've commandeered about how the chuds and the alt-right bigots and all these people chase them out of the industry and nobody's gonna listen to them. It's over, it is over. This, this, this chapter of uh, fan baiting, fan hating media is, is effectively over. So we won guys, we won. There's still gonna be little battles here and there, but I think we won. Nature is healing. It's, it's basically over. So I'm going to wrap this up. Just some thoughts I've had about it uh, for a couple of weeks now. And since Geeky wasn't here, I thought I would talk about it a little bit on an episode. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Go to clownfishtv.com for more objective pop culture news. Look at that. We've got actual articles by actual writers. Actual articles by actual writers. Imagine that. We're doing the journalism. Clownfishtv.com. We'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.